How's everybody doing in SnowRunner on hard mode? As you can see, I'm on hard mode, okay? Let's talk about my trucks. I thought this would be a special vi a video and just talk about my trucks. And to do that, I go to this screen, which is hitting down on the D-pad on my PlayStation 4 controller. Excuse me. <clears throat> and then uh, go to my trucks. Starting here on the top, on the far left corner is the Dan. I love this truck. Oh yeah, it's got many uses. It's a powerful truck. The Scout 800, the raised suspension is a bad investment on this because it becomes way too flippable. It'll turn on its side way too much. So you're going to want an autonomous winch for this if you get the raised suspension, but it's just so ridiculous. The Scout 800 with the raised suspension is ridiculously um, off-center, where the center of gravity is so high that it's not going to be a fun time even with an autonomous winch. Okay? Of course, everybody should get an autonomous winch with their scout vehicles, in my opinion, if it's available. If it's not available, then, you know, whatever. The, 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 uh, the P-16. Alright, yeah. You want to keep this one. Don't sell it. I know it's tempting for hard mode, you know? But keep it just because it's not all-wheel drive, do not judge this one by its cover. It's a powerful truck for logging. Use it. Okay, use it. Keep it. The Warthog, yeah. I got this one. This is nice. I still got to use it, though. Still got to put it to use, but I'm looking forward to it. The Voron Grad, this is one that I purchased from my profits in the game. I'm very um, kind of mixed feelings on this one. It's not as powerful as I thought it would be. It's not as, I guess it doesn't have the weight. But it is nice. I, right now, what its purpose is, is it's my repair truck. Because it can get anywhere it wants to go. But it, 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 it's, um, I thought I was expecting a little bit more. But still, it's it's a nice badass truck okay this one here we'll start at the top again the tuz 166 is a nice scout scout truck once you get the upgrades for it it's got the power to go in between those small places where other vehicles can just can't go you know to get those upgrades you take this with you on a trailer and then a deploy it as a scout and then it's it's limited fuel but it's got great fuel economy yeah, I love those little scouts because they can just go anywhere in between the little nooks and crannies of the maps, you know, and in between the small parts of trees where there, where there's stuff, the places that you need to go that you want to just explore. Oh, yeah. Now you're talking. This one, of course, we get two of them in our campaign. Make sure you'll keep at least one. I only have one left. I sold one because of how much we get for selling it. I forgot how much, but it's a lot. And you're thinking to yourself, why do we need two? Well, if you still have two, then I want to just say that's awesome that you still have two. Because I wish I still had two, but, you know, selling it, you know, I did put that money to use. But if you're able to keep two of them, that's awesome. Okay. This one, the Chevrolet Kodiak, I um, have found a use for. It's a nice support truck once you get the upgrades for it. I still have the original Fleet Star with me. I'm proud of that. It is a, still a nice, viable truck, even in mid-game. Right now, I'm in mid-game as far as if you include all the DLCs and year season, all, yeah, I mean, um, year one pass and year two pass, season passes, I'm, I'm at about mid-game with my campaign, and this is still a viable truck, but be careful. I call it its nickname, in my opinion, of what I've called it. I don't know if you've called it too, or if you've heard it somewhere else, but I call it the Flip Star. Yeah, it flips a lot. It's 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 bouncy, it, you know. But it is a very viable truck. You got to be careful. Take your time. Okay. The Tuz One Six. Uh, this is one that I bought. It's a very nice miniaturized truck, but 
It's very powerful. It's like an ant. It's like a little powerful ant. It's it's and it's it, it's a miniaturized truck. It, it's it does the work and it gets into the nooks and crannies just like the small scouts do. But it's a work truck and that's what's awesome about it. I love this truck. So it's a badass truck and I'm glad I bought it. Total with upgrades. I can't remember, but I think I spent like 60 grand in upgrades, whatever, and then whatever the price is, stock. And then I bought all the good upgrades, and, and, I, and I had the best engine for it because I found it in my travels. I must have found the best engine. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. I'm definitely getting this one because we can do a preview for it. I always preview my trucks just like everybody else does. And then if, the, if, and if I have the best upgrades for it, that increases its odds of getting purchased. And I'm glad I purchased this one. I did. This one was an awesome investment. It has served its purpose ten times over. Oh, yeah. Caterpillar. We're going to start at the bottom and go up. Of course, everybody's got this. Do not sell it. It's a great rescue truck where other trucks just can't go. We're in deep, rough, marshy, deep, boggy terrain, you know, or big rocks. It's almost, this, this, is, it, it, this one might as well be a tank. It's awesome, but it's slow, but it'll go anywhere you need to go. I've got two of these. You get one. The game gives you one for free on hard mode. I'm not sure about regular mode, but I know because I play hard mode. Once you unlock it, the game gives you one for free magically in your garage, and then I bought one, and I spent a total of about $150,000, including upgrades. And I've got two of these, and they are badass. They're just big, beasty, awesome work trucks. That, yeah! You know what I'm saying? This one sucks, but I still have it just because it was my starter truck. I don't like to sell trucks. I like to keep them. If I have to sell a vehicle, no. I'd rather just go to another map and figure out a way to make some money rather than sell a truck. So, even though this one is a piece of shit in the snow, it really is. Even with the raised suspension and the best tires and the best engine... I am not impressed with this vehicle in the snow. So don't take it to, uh, if you think you're going to get anywhere in the snow with this, you're going to better think twice. It, so, it, but it, it, had, it has its moments. It does have its moments, and it has become very useful, and I wouldn't be where I am in my campaign, campaign without it. But yeah, it could use a little tweaking, give it a little bit more power in the snow. It drives like its handbrake is always on in the snow. Just saying. Hey. Even with the race suspension and the biggest tires, it doesn't make sense to me. All-wheel drive. It doesn't feel realistic like real life, okay? It really doesn't. Tatra 805. This is one that I bought. A nice little miniaturized truck once again. I like having, arm, li I like having a small army, a small fleet of miniaturized work trucks that are just as powerful as their bigger counterparts. They're like little work trucks. Little tiny little work trucks, just like ants. That's the best way to describe them. They're just as powerful as little tiny ants as far as their strength compared to their size and what they can do. And then they, and it, you know, in Michigan there's a quarry which is very treacherous, and these little small work trucks can, can use those really small thin roads, and that's what I'm going to use them for. I've already got the uh, this one here already set to go in Michigan. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm still working on Michigan, believe it or not. I, I went back and came back. That's if you want to ask me in the comments how I did that. I did it. Okay, I did it. I did it during the glitch. I took advantage of it during the glitch that just recently happened with the update eight, where it turned our hard mode game into regular mode. You know. Yeah, I took advantage of it just like I think some of us did, and I, I, I'm not proud of it. I did sell some trailers that I didn't need anymore. I mean, come on, come on. And then. Um, I teleported some vehicles for free to Michigan, four of them. So I, I, I'm going to finish up Michigan because right now in Michigan I only have like 79% complete right now. And there's still some money to be made in logging and some other missions and tasks that I didn't finish. So I took advantage of it and I took advantage of the fuel. I've got fuel set up. I've got four trucks set up in Michigan. And, you know, since we're talking about it, that, yeah... But now hard mode, we're back to hard mode, and I just want to thank the game for fixing that patch. Thank the developers. The Step 310. Oh, yeah, this is a heavy truck. Its nickname is Tega's 
little little brother. The Tega 6436, the Tega family. The Tega family brothers, this is the little brother of the Tega family. And a lot of people give hate, give it hate because it's got a, a little bit smaller fuel tank than what they expected. It could use a little bit more capacity on the fuel tank, but it still does its job as long as it sticks within the supply fuel lines that we set up, the supply lines that we set up with our fuel. As long as it sticks to those and sticks to that path and follows along, doesn't stray too far, this truck will serve you well. It's a great rescue truck because it's got the weight behind it. It's a heavy truck. You know, it's a, look it up on Google. I did. That's how I found out. Yeah. Or was it SnowRunner Wikipedia? That might have been it too. The Dairy Longhorn. Let's continue. This is a beast of a truck. I've got the best upgrades for it. I finally got them. And once I got them, I am not looking back on this one. This is something I will never sell. It will get your cargo from point A to point B in even the steepest terrain. It's got the balls, okay? Oh, yeah, that's a nice truck. The White Western Star. This one we get in the very beginning of the game. In the, in the you know, and I believe in Michigan, if I'm not mistaken, right? Of course. Or is it Alaska? You know, I can't remember. It's been so long. It's, uh, anyway, uh, I believe it is Michigan. This one is an awesome truck. Do not sell it. Keep it. Get the best upgrades for it. Get everything for it. This truck will serve you well, let me tell you. The, the Ford F750, another one I took advantage of the upgrades. There was also a glitch with the recent Update 8. Not only did it get our, change our game from hard mode to regular mode, but it also the upgrades were all unlocked. So rather than finding it, in the Kola Peninsula, which I, is, I believe is where it is hidden, I just took advantage of it and had what sold some trailers. I think I sold like three trailers, a logging trailer and a couple um, other trailers. A long logging trailer, that is, the long logging attachment. And then I bought the best engine for it because without the best engine for this, you might as not we not might as not even drive it anywhere because it goes from the second best is like a C something I can't think I think a C minus or a C or a C plus I can't remember and then the best engine for it jumps all the way up to where it's like where you need it to be like A plus or is it S I don't even know but the difference is so huge that even the second best engine for the F750 is not worth it I mean, you can get by, but you're not going to go very far. You got to be real careful. You 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 uh, avoid even the you know. I'm just saying, you know, it's the the second best engine doesn't have what it takes, in my opinion. So just be aware of that. You're going to need the best upgrade for that. Do what you ever, whatever you got to do to get it on hard mode. Go find it. And if you didn't take advantage of the recent glitch. You know, hey, there's don't feel bad because there's other trucks that I didn't take advantage of. Like for this one, I could have. I still have to find the all-wheel drive upgrade for this one. And those that took advantage of the glitch and bought the all-wheel drive for this are starter, one of our starter trucks. Once you get this upgraded, it's a great work truck. But beware, it's not very heavy. So it will be careful. It, it's easily flippable, but if you can avoid that, it's a great work truck once you get the all-wheel drive upgrade. And if you took advantage of that during the glitch, you're awesome. You did what I did with the F750, so. There's some that, you know, you can't cover all your bases, you know, and, you, and I didn't want to be too greedy either. You know, I didn't I didn't want to do, there's, there's quite a few trucks if I go through, I could have got them all. And, I, and there could have been a few more trailers if I searched really hard enough on all the maps that I've done. Because I've done quite a few of them. Even though I didn't complete them 100%. You can ask me why I didn't in the comments. But if I had really searched hard enough and found every single trailer and every single truck or vehicle or scout that I could upgrade the best and took advantage of that, I, I, didn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't feel right about it. And I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I only did a little bit. I only upgraded a couple trucks and sold like three trailers. I probably could have sold like 10 if I searched hard enough with all the maps that I've done and accomplished in the regions that I've done. But, you know, hey, whatever. You know, I'm not judging people. It, it's a lot of work. 
I won't, I'll admit that too. That's why I didn't didn't do it too. But I'm I'm glad I didn't take advantage of it. I could have put the work in and took advantage of it more, but then I think I would have felt bad about it even more than I do right now. And because the little bit of that, the little bit that I did do, I think we all kind of deserve just a little bit, a little piece of that pie, of taking advantage of it and getting a little bit more of our little cash flow going, you know, sell a few trailers, upgrade a few vehicles, you know, everybody just take a little bit, you know, everybody deserve, everybody who's put their hard work in, the blood, sweat, the fuel, and the diesel, and the tears, into our hard mode campaigns over the last couple years, maybe even three years for some, that's how long this game's been out. Yeah. I think we deserve a little bit of that. So, but you know, if if you did, if you worked, it's a lot of work. If you if you did and you did 100% and you sold 10 trailers, hey, more power to you. I'm not judging you and I'm not putting you down for it. Don't feel bad about it either. But that's sh that's just me, okay? This one, the International Paystar, I thought would be a little bit more powerful. It, it's got a large frame. It's got a three-slot attachment in um in the uh, up in the, uh, what do you call it, the, the frame add-ons in the garage. And because of that, it's, it adds more weight to it, even with the sideboard three-slot, which I have, is what I have for this one. It just it seems sluggish. It really does. It, even with, I have the off-road gearbox for it, which gives it a little bit more power and a little bit more torque, but it just seems to be lacking. It seems like it needs to be tweaked by the developers in the code, is what I'm saying. So I do like it though, but it, it, the small fuel tank on this one, this one is a gas guzzler to the extreme. It's only got 70 something gallons, I think 74, 77, 71, something, some number like that. It burns through it quicklier. It would be nice. It doesn't really, I'm not sure why this one has such a small fuel tank. Maybe it's, I don't know. Maybe it's to resemble real life, which I like, which is good. But, you know, as long as you stick with the supply lines and your fuel supply lines and stick with them and don't go too far off, just like the just like the Step 310 has that issue, it's a great work truck. And do not sell it. Keep it. Like, But there are going to be some trucks you see here that I have that you don't have, and there might be some missing that, I, that you have that I don't have, and you might be asking why I don't have them. I sold them in my travels. You know, Michigan gave me a lot of trouble. I did not have a lot of luck in Michigan in my first playthrough. I actually had to restart my hard mode only once. And then my second time, I still had trouble in Michigan. I had a lot of bad luck. But, you know, I persevered. So that's why you might see some trucks here that are awesome trucks that I just had to sell. I, I chose to sell them for whatever reason. And uh, you can ask me in the comments. And you can, you can tell me in the comments. You can even say... I made a mistake, but that's okay. I needed the money. There are some trucks that I have that you may not have, and I could make the same argument, just saying. And there's some trucks that you, you might be the exact same as me, and if that's the case, that's an incredible coincidence. The Con 39 Marshall is a DLC I got with the pre-order. You have to buy it in Russia, and then you uh, deploy it wherever you want to go. This is an awesome investment, but the uh, freeway gearbox... I just recently found out is a piece of shit. There's something wrong with it. It needs to be tweaked. And that's just not me saying it. Other YouTubers have agreed and they've made content about it. So I'm not the only one. But that's another story and I could talk for about a thousand miles on that one. And I'm not going to. I made a video about it already. Or I made a, quite a few videos about it where I talk about it actually. I d it just comes up in the conversation, you know. The Tega 6436, an early truck we unlock in Tymir, if that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure if it's Tamir, Tymir, or whatever. That I might say Tamir or Tymir, whatever is comfortable. But um, some people may say it differently, so I apologize in advance if, you know, if I mispronounce where we find this one. It's a nice truck. I like it. It will get the job done. Now, here we are, the bigger, beefier brother, Tega. Oh, yeah. I've got two of these. The game gives you one for free when you unlock it. Did I already talk about that? I may have in a previous video when I've made so many videos, but I might as well say it again. 
Because I met some videos don't get published. So I feel like I'm talking about it again in the same video sometimes. But the Tega 6455B on hard mode, and I apologize if I'm repeating myself, is given to us for free once we unlock it. In the garage, on hard mode, I'm not sure for regular mode, teleported into the garage for free, and then I bought one. Including all the upgrades, I got the best of everything. It was about 150 grand. So I have two of these, and I'm glad I have two of them. Very powerful, beefy work truck. It's They're awesome. They are, both of them. The Gore by 4, I'm not impressed with. I'm not impressed at all. It's got the second best engine, and even though it's an A minus power to weight, with the freeway gearbox, it's a piece of shit. You're better off just sticking with the stock gearbox on this one. It's more powerful. It's better. You're going to get better acceleration. The freeway gearbox doesn't make any sense for SnowRunner, the way it's set up. But that's another video. That's all my trucks I'd like to talk about, and I think I went through all of them. And I apologize if I um, talked about any of them twice. You know, but everybody, you know, let me know what you, you what, what you think about all of this. And let me know what trucks you have that I don't, that you kept. And let me know how they've served you and maybe what trouble you had getting them to the garage. Was it worth it? Have they served their purpose? Are you glad you kept them? Are you glad you didn't keep them? Whatever. You know, let me know. I'm curious. I sincerely am curious because I want to know. I want to know how your hard mode campaign is going just like mine, okay? Now, to, just before, until we end this video, let me just show you everything that I've done. 43% of Tennessee, but I'm still working on it. All of them, including all the DLCs, not including Update 8. I'm not sure. I think I still have to unlock it, even though I have the year two pass. It's not including in these in these statistics because I haven't unlocked it yet. Even though it is there. All I got to do is just tell my PlayStation 4 to unlock it. And that's easy to do. I know how to do it. So just so that be aware of that. Michigan, I'm back into it. I'm going to finish up there. Alaska, I'm done with. You can ask me why it's not 100%. If you'd like in the comments, I'll tell you why. Same with time here. I'm coming back though. I'm coming back to time here. There's still a lot of money to be made in time here. At least a couple hundred thousand more dollars. Kola Peninsula kicked my ass. So far, I've broke even. I have broken even in the Kola Peninsula. This map kicked my ass. I had a lot of bad luck. But I did get the Ford F750 out of it, so I'm happy about that. Let's, let's continue. The Yukon, I have not been to yet. I'm looking forward to that. There's a ton of money to be made there. At least $500,000 or more. Yeah. Not including overhead costs, of course, where the fuel and deployment fees. Okay. Wisconsin, I have completed. You can ask me why it's not 100% in the comments. I'll let you know. But there are, I have my, I have the reasons that I have, but that's better left in the comments because it's kind of complicated as to why I don't have 100%. A moor. For some reason, I confused the Kola Peninsula and a moor. I'm not sure why. And I apologize for that. I haven't even touched a moor. How did I do that? Well, there's so many regions. So I made a mistake there. I'm in the Kola Peninsula on the second map where the garage is. And for some reason, I called it a moor. And I'm not sure why. I'd like to know why. I'm going to find out by the end of this video. The Don, I'm working on simultaneously. I've got some trucks there. Maine, I'm completed. I've completed with Maine. I made quite a bit of money in Maine. I could have made more, but, you know, things just happened. It's, it just didn't happen. There's still 23% money to be made there. That's a lot. But maybe I'll return one day. There's still a lot of money to be possibly made in Maine. Tennessee, I'm working on simultaneously. That's pretty much going to wrap this video up. I hope you've had a good day. Right now, I'm working in Tennessee. I might go back to the Don if I have some complications on one map. That's why I do three different maps at the same time. I'm in, right now, I'm in Michigan, the Don, and Tennessee. And I believe there's just those three. There might be a fourth one that I forgot about because I like working on different maps simultaneously because it's a nice change of pace. 
is what I'm trying to say, all right? Good luck, everybody, out there in your nice uh, hard mode campaigns, all right? And thank you for watching. Hit that like button and hit that subscribe button because it really lets me know that this channel is going in the right direction because, you know, this is a lot of work. This, doing this is not easy. This is a full-time job, believe it or not. Yeah. Have fun out there in SnowRunner. Thanks for watching.